it's difficult to believe that all those biologists, zoologists, and other scientists can be wrong. After all, they've been trained in the world's leading universities. Perhaps Professor Maciej Giertich of the Polish Academy of Sciences Institute of Dendrology, who lectures in population genetics at the Torun University in Poland, can help us. A good scientist is one who bases his conclusions on experimental data and observation. Scientists who study genetics, cytology, anatomy, or any other field of experimental sciences is good and reliable, regardless what he thinks about evolution. Science works very well this way. Where things do go wrong is when someone claims to be an expert in evolution. Why do you say that? Because evolution is not a science, it is a philosophy. Since scientists trust each other, they often accept the claim of evolutionists that evolution is a science. But it is not. It is uh, the opinion of theoretical biologists and philosophers that evolution is a science. But is there no scientific evidence for evolution? Uh, what is claimed to be a, an evidence for evolution is the universally observable fact that every organism has parents, or at least one parent. Now this coupled with the uh, knowledge that there was a time when there were no ants, no frogs, no men, leads to the unscientific postulate that uh, the first frog was born of a non-frog, the first ant of a non-ant, the first human of a non-human, and so on. Why do you say this idea is unscientific? Because the available evidence does not support it. The science of genetics clearly shows that such change is not possible. The evolutionists go even further. They claim that uh, living things have evolved from non-living matter. But if there is no scientific data to support the evolutionist claims, how is it they manage to convince so many other scientists that evolution is a scientific fact? Uh, their main argument is that there are small uh, positive or be beneficial mutations occur in the reproduction cells and are retained by natural selection. These mutations, they say, accumulate and cause a species to gradually change into another species. Now, I am a geneticist, and I can confirm that in all the studies, in all laboratories around the world, where many generations of organisms have been produced, nowhere have positive mutations have ever been observed. And also, in the most studied population of all, the human population, all known mutations are either neutral or harmful. They are never an improvement. In fact, uh, nature is programmed to protect genes from changes and to correct uh, errors that have occurred. But if mutations don't cause changes, what causes all the different varieties of animals and the different types of men? Uh, the varieties come from recombinations, from the mixing of genes during sexual reproduction. Organisms adapted to a set of conditions will concentrate in an environment that has these conditions. By interbreeding, they will form a population which uh, has the, uh, what we call, a, becomes a variety. Now also, uh, if by accident a population is isolated, some features uh, may concentrate in that population and give it a distinct appearance. This is what we call genetic drift. Don't these varieties represent some form of evolution? Well, many people claim that uh, through this process, new biological types would, uh, will arise. But this is not so. All that has happened is that some genes have been segregated out of the population, and the population that we uh, obtain is impoverished. It is poorer in gene content. No new genes have been formed. Now, if there are no new genes, there's no potential for new organs, no potential for new organisms. Uh, just a different variety of the same species resulted. Uh, we do this ourselves, ourselves all the time in breeding. 
by selection and isolation, uh, we obtain new varieties of animals and plants. We select horses, cows, uh, dogs, and so on. Also in plants, cereals, uh, vegetables, and so on. Uh, we select those which are useful to man, which have certain characteristics and that are of special interest to us. But these populations are uh, restricted in the genetic pool and uh, they are very much dependent on the conditions, on the external conditions uh, that are provided for them. Uh, they are dependent on the conditions that man will create for them. And if they are left alone, they will either die or uh, they will, uh, if they survive, they will return to the wild state. Uh, they will cease to be a, a, a separate variety. So, if life forms are more resistant in their natural state, any change that takes place in nature would perhaps be long-lasting. Just mixing of genes, whether in natural conditions or in domesticated conditions, does not provide new genes. For evolution, we need new genes full of new genetic information. There is no natural process known to science which will produce these uh, new genes, neither by isolation, selection, uh, mutation, or breeding. This is not possible. But why is it then that children are taught that one species can evolve into another? Well, I think it is because evolutionists are unwilling to face the fact that genes contain so much useful information, information needed uh, for the precise functions that the organisms have to perform. It is since we have uh, been learned how to read the genetic code that we have become aware of the mass of information contained in the genes. Uh, there's no known way to, sci of, to science of how this information can arise spontaneously. It requires an intelligence. It cannot arise from ch chance events. Uh, just mixing letters does not produce poetry. The science of molecular biology makes it clear that never in the past could there have been such a thing as a simple organism. All organisms, however primitive they may appear, are complex and bursting with information. And we know that this information must have been there from the very beginning. For example, the very complex DNA, RNA, protein replicating system in the cell must have been perfect from the very start. If not, life systems could not exist. The only logical explanation is that this vast quantity of information came from intelligence. Every bacterium, every microscopic cell is so precisely programmed that we have to assume that the information contained within it comes from an intelligence far beyond our own. The evolutionists do not want to accept this self-evident fact. As a result, they are producing theories which are of no scientific value because they do not provide any ideas how new genetic information is produced.